Now, since we're kind of still scrambling for things to do with the weather, with our waiting for parts and everything, we're going to have a look at fitting a fuel filler neck. Unfortunately, we kind of screwed ourselves a while ago when we installed the fuel tank. We forgot to put a removable detachable connector on the two wires for the level sensor. So right now it's hard spliced into the rest of the car's wiring loom. So we're just going to snip that, bring the fuel tank in, and then later on we're going to add like a proper self-sealing connector to that so that we can remove it properly in future rather than with, rather than with a pair of snips. I think this is the first time the fuel tank's been out of the car since we last had it all stripped apart, which feels like at least 18 months, maybe even two years ago. And we've never had it open, so the inside of this should be absolutely fine. But this is gonna be an interesting time to really get inside, because again, I don't think I've actually opened this cap since I bought this and had a look inside and went, oh, okay, fair enough, and then ignored it ever since. So we've gone over it and cleaned it up because there was a load of little iron filings that were starting to rust and just grime across the whole thing so a uh, bit of brake clean bit of thinners i wonder what chemical that actually makes but it did a perfectly good job of getting rid of all the grime and then we just threw a bit of paint on to clean it up now this is the new fill port that's going to go on this is a lot narrower obviously than the opening on here and i am much much more comfortable having a smaller opening for the nozzle to go in rather than having this big gaping void that essentially you can fill all the way up to the top in theory and it would just spill over at least this way put the nozzle in and it will automatically close off before it gets right up to the very top so i'm a little bit happier with this I have tried to work out some way that we can integrate this into the bodywork so we could actually have a filler port on the side of the car. And unfortunately, that is just going to have to be a later problem because I can't find a decent way to do it. We could have one of those um, like surface mount caps, like the old sort of Cobra style or, um, or a charger where it pops, but having it on the front of the wing, just it wouldn't look good. It would look absolutely terrible um, just having that big like wart as you drive along with the car and just sitting and just, I don't like the idea of that. So having something flush mount, we'd have to get something that was the same curvature as the body where the wing is at the very top. Again, extremely difficult to do. We'd have to make a recess pocket and all the rest of it. So unfortunately, I don't think that's gonna be something we can actually make. And we're just gonna have the front of the car, well, the bonnet open up in order to fill the tank up. So all we need to do, in theory at least, is whiz these off. Apparently I have not put the socket on the end. Now we get to see just how bad this is underneath and hopefully not drop any more of those inside. That's actually not bad. It's got a nice little rubber seal that sits around all of these bolts, but I am gonna give the rest of this a really good clean before I put the new one on. So that rubber seal also holds all of the bolts in, which is a very convenient design, but oh wow, they are, wow, they're terrible. They've rusted really badly. Yeah, that's, that's not good. Okay, so we've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Two, four, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I definitely think we're going to have to get some new bolts because I don't particularly want these rusty heads to be inside the tank and um, dropping little bits of rust in and relying on the filter to extract them. So that's a bit annoying. We might have to get some stainless ones to replace those. But for the time being, whilst it's not being filled, they will have to do because we don't have anything even remotely like this that's that short. I don't think we even have many M6 bolts left at the moment. But inside the tank is reasonable it's clean enough like you'd expect an aluminium tank to be it hasn't rusted the float has a little bit of rust on it um where again water must have been getting under for these to rust um and causing the rest of it to also corrode down to the float the most weird thing about it though is the float is right at the bottom of its travel halfway down the tank and we've been trying to kind of rationalize this in a sensible way that yeah sure you want it reading empty with some level of reserve in the tank 
But given this is a 30 litre tank, if it's showing empty on the float level at 15 litres left, that seems like a lot. Like, that doesn't seem like a reasonable amount. I would expect that to be much longer, so it's entirely possible we might end up changing that so that it gets way, way further down to where there's maybe only a couple of inches left before you get to the bottom of the tank where the float is actually reading empty, empty. So that's all of the bolts back in with the gasket on. We can put this in and I need to try and work out which way round I actually want this all of a sudden. The sump is on that side, so this needs to go in like that, I think. Okay, this is very, very awkward. I do have a small question, which is how I'm going to uh, run these lock nuts on without being able to hold the other side. These might actually need to be swapped out for regular non-lock, thread lock um, nuts in order to get any torque on it whatsoever. Chris just suggested putting rev nuts in, which we've solved all of our problems with rev nuts in the past. Um, yeah, I'm going to swap these out for the time being for regular nuts um, because I don't think there's any way that I'm going to be able to hold this in place and do it. Okay, this is going to take some time and you definitely don't want to watch me do this, so we'll be back in a second. Okay, well that is all bar one of the bolts in. I cannot get that one to uh, turn down and actually tighten up. I think the bolt is just a little bit too crusty. And unfortunately, having all 11 other ones done, I'm not willing to take them all back off again. The powder coating on this part as well is particularly poor. Um, it is just peeling up. So I think at some point this is just gonna get aqua blasted, get all of the powder coat off and we'll just run it as raw aluminium. Um, rather than trying to put anything on it. I think the benefit in order to get these torqued up finally, finally, is to put some lock washers on the other side, some of the little toothed ones that will sit behind the bolt head and bite into the inside of the tank so that when we tighten it down on the top, it will actually hold the other side of the bolt in. And I think that's why there's as much water got in and rusted the bolts because there is no possible way you could have easily tightened up those, um, those nuts from the underside, oh sorry, holding onto the bolts on the underside and then tightened on the top. At least not for a cheap tank like this. I'm sure there are ways you could have done it, I can think of them offhand, but realistically they weren't going to happen for something of this price. But on the upside we now have a much better filler nozzle in. I'm sure it's going to get in the way of a bunch of stuff and I'm willing to bet it might even make it an absolute nightmare to install because I hadn't considered how far this sticks out when I removed it a minute ago to install it. So we might have to take all of this off again. Now I'm actually processing it through in my head and I have regrets. There is one more thing that we're going to have to add to this that the old lid has integrated into it. And if you look on the underside, you can just vaguely see there are some holes in this little flute, and that will be the vent for when this inevitably gets warm and tries to expand and obviously deal with the vapor that you find inside. And at the moment, what we've made is a completely pressure sealed, well, if these were done up, pressure sealed container. So we're gonna have to get a little vent tube that goes onto an AN fitting, which shouldn't be too bad. We can just fit an AN line on like this, run it down and just have it so that it will vent to atmosphere in much the same way as that will. Uh, but hopefully we might even be able to run it so it vents to outside of the car rather than having it venting underneath the bonnet area. And just like that, three months have suddenly passed uh, between Christmas and New Year and me moving house and Aid being away here and there and all the weather. It has been an absolute age since we were last here working on the car. And to be honest, we've actually forgot quite a bit of stuff about where we were at, what all the different bits that we had going on were. But since coming back here, we've had a bit of a look around the car and we've realized that while the fuel tank is out, there were some hydraulic bits that we have to finish off after getting rid of our hydraulic handbrake. So hopefully we can have something besides a fuel tank. Well, the problem's pretty simple. A little while ago when we replaced the hydro, we also replaced the brake line that ran down the car because previously the brake line came out of our master cylinder at the front into the hydro, 
back out of it and onto the back of the car. Obviously no hydro, no join, so we had to put a new line in. When we were doing that, we noticed that a much shorter piece of, of um, hydraulic line coming off of the clutch master cylinder had actually been pinched, like been flattened, uh, flattened completely somewhere in the front of the car here. And our guess is that when we jacked the car up at some point, we had the, um, the clutch line sandwiched between the floor of the car, which is what we were lifting on, and some part of the chassis. So we obviously lifted the whole weight of the car through a little piece of copper tube, which isn't really very good. So we're going to replace that real quick, which since the fuel tank out, is nice and easy. So we're going to get that in. And I've also noticed in doing so that one of the hold downs that we use, we've got a couple of little like pressed in uh, threaded inserts in the, in the body. One of those is also stripped. So we've got to drill that out, put a new riv nut in, and then we can hold this all together. All right. So from where the camera is now, you've got a much better shot of where we're getting this new clutch hose. So it's going in from the, uh, I don't know, accumulator or whatever that little device is there into the top of the clutch master cylinder. So we've got a hose that we've bent up roughly into shape, just going to do a quick test fit. It's quite awkward to get in here from, uh, from outside with the car this high in the air, which is why I'm currently spread across the wing. But that does, I mean, it's difficult to say because the thing's not really sitting in quite the right position, but it's certainly the right length of line. I think we just need to tweak some of the angles a bit and give it another go. We've been backward and forward a few times, and this is the finished final piece of our clutch line. Now, when you're putting these things together with the, all these various different fittings, there are more than two different dimensions you have to worry about. Two that are easy to catch you out are the, uh, the thread size and the pitch, fairly normal stuff. You know, are you a metric or an imperial thread? Are you like how many teeth per inch or how many millimeters of pitch are there between them? So we've got one metric and one UNF or something here, if I remember right. It's not super normal to have both, but given that we're like a parts bin, deal here it's fairly predictable one other thing though that we've we've missed a few times there is a third and arguably a fourth dimension to these that you have to care about it's not just the thread itself it is how long the total fitting is so on here we've got two different fittings both the same thread they'll both go into the same uh, into the same like end users you know pistons or cylinders or whatever but the shorter one here would feel like it had bottomed out and it would feel like it's held nicely into whatever you're attaching your line to. The line would feel solid and everything would be fine, apart from the fact there would actually be no seal. Sometimes you need a much longer fitting like this one here, which is not only a longer thread, which also matters, but it also has an additional snout on the end so that even when the thread is bottomed out, there's still a bit more metal there, which is actually what presses up on the back of that flare and really produces the seal. The thread itself isn't the seal, it's all in the copper at the end. So you've got to press the copper right down into the, uh, into the device that you're installing this into to get it to seal. So pay attention to the length of your fittings if, you do, if you're uh, ever doing anything like this yourself and don't let yourself get caught out by, oh, the fitting threads in perfectly, so it must be fine. Because yeah, this is not the first time we've made that mistake. So now there are two things left for us to do with this fuel tank. First, we have to put a connector on here where we've had to cut it off of the car because we've managed to like rigidly attach the rest of the wire to it because we're really clever. Second of two, we've got to put this little vent on. Now this has a little safety valve in it. So if we ever go upside down, although we'll have other big problems, at least fuel won't come out of our tank. There's a little ball valve in there. If it's the wrong way up, it just seals up. Or if lots of fluid tries coming out through it, it will seal up that way as well. But normally it will just slowly bleed any excess pressure out of the tank. So I have to get a little adapter for our AN12 to go onto a barb fitting for that. And the third of the two things that we have to do here is unfortunately because Adrian was right, this does not fit back in the car with this uh, neck on it. So we're gonna have to take this back off, put it in and then put it back on again. Well, that's the third of our two jobs done. Unfortunately, one and two, the uh, new connector and the vent still have to wait because we've got to get a few new parts in for those, but the tank is back in, which is kind of a pain. So I'm really glad to have that behind us. Really sorry that this episode has basically been tank out, fill a neck on, fill a neck off, tank in, fill a neck on. It's um, not the most varied piece of content we've ever put out, but uh, it is a can that we've been kicking down the road now for a number of years. And it's probably for the best that we got out of the way now before we build even more stuff and made this even more difficult for ourselves. 
Well, that's it for this episode, folks. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like the video down below, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell, all that fun stuff. And hopefully that way you'll know when we do something slightly more interesting than putting a fuel tank in. You can also jump on patreon.com forward slash pedal box show if you want to support us directly with some monies. It's very much appreciated. It pays for all our welding gas, pays for all the other little odds and sods that we use around the car building this thing. And you can jump on shop.pedalbox.show where you can buy any of the swanky merch that, as usual, I have failed to wear. Ada's just helpfully thrown me a hat, which is perfect for this time of year. We've also got mugs, t-shirts, hoodies, and a bunch of other stuff that I can't remember on there. So yeah, if you want to support us and wear our name a little, you're more than welcome to. And with that, thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.